Uh, good afternoon, and we're wishing everyone here uh, a happy World Science Day. My name's Ivan, and to celebrate, we'll open the doors to the cube to you all. Um, our research and development, research and development function, uh, site here at the here on the shores of. Well, I, I, I was going to say beautiful Lake Neuchatel, but um, <laughs> nonetheless, here we are on the shores of Lake Neuchatel uh, in the beautiful part of Western Switzerland. Uh, today, I'm joined by Dr. Moira Gilchrist, uh, Director of Scientific Engagement, uh, and she'll be taking a few questions. Uh, so we'll be opening up the floor to, um, to invite you, our viewers at home, uh, to, you know, to talk, throw us some questions, and we'll be happy to answer those uh, at the end of the session. Uh, Moira, thank you for joining. Thank you very much for joining us today uh, and taking the time to speak to us. Uh, why have you decided to open the doors of the queue? Well, we just felt that it was a fantastic opportunity uh, on World uh, Science Day. So I think people out there wouldn't necessarily relate a tobacco company with state-of-the-art science, and we really wanted to explain to people what we're doing here in this building and our other facility in, in Singapore because it really is groundbreaking science um, related to what we call risk-reduced products. Okay, and would it, would it be possible to tell um, us exactly what the CUBE is? Okay, so the CUBE is basically our R&D headquarters, and it's here that we're tasked with the, um, with the challenge of developing and assessing reduced risk products. So what, I, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is we know that the vast majority of the harmful effects caused by smoking are caused by the fact that we burn tobacco, or smokers burn tobacco. It's the high temperature of combustion that causes the generation of the vast majority of the harmful chemicals that are thought to be the causes of smoking-related diseases. So here in this building, we're trying to develop and assess products that, have, that produce far um, levels of these harmful or potential to reduce the health risk to smokers who, who switch to the challenge. Today there are more than a billion smokers worldwide and even though governments and public health agencies have made significant strides in preventing people from taking up smoking and encouraging them to stop smoking, there, um, because there have been population increases, that number of a billion has been around for quite some time and will continue into the future. So for those smokers who otherwise would not give up smoking, what we would like to do is offer them reduced risk alternatives. So alternative products that they can switch to that would significantly reduce their own health risk um, and allow them to, to use a product and not go back to regular cigarettes. That's really the, the mission we have. And what we would like to do is convert every single one of those billion smokers that exist on the planet, those billion adult smokers. Okay. Um, that would then, to a certain extent, beg the question to not just the viewers at home, but I'm sure people all over the, all over the world. But why would, why would Philip Morris, a tobacco company, want people to find an alternative? Well, First of all, we believe that we have a responsibility to society to provide these alternative products to smokers, uh, to adult smokers uh, today and in, in the future. And of course, not only if, if we're successful in switching all those adult smokers to reduced risk alternatives, not only would that be a benefit for public health, but of course it makes business sense for us as a, as a company too. Okay. Um, so would you be able to go into detail about the types of scientific research that is uh, conducted here at the Very difficult to do in a very short <laughs> space of time because we have a plethora of science going on here from chemistry, so looking at the levels of chemicals that are formed and created in these new products and assessing how much reduced they are compared to cigarette smoke, through to toxicology, which is really about predicting whether these products could be less harmful in, in, in adult smokers when uh, we switch to them. Then clinical studies, and we have a range of clinical studies that we've already completed and some are um, uh, still ongoing, that look at whether smokers um, find the products attractive, so whether they can switch to them, whether they deliver nicotine in the way that the smoker expects and satisfaction in the way that the smoker expects. But then we're also looking at whether smokers who switch to these products absorb lower levels of harmful chemicals compared to cigarette smoking and compared to smokers who stop smoking. 
And then the final part is what we call perception and behavioural assessment. Okay. So that's really looking at whether um, uh, smokers are attracted to the product, which would be a good thing, have them to switch to the product. But also we're concerned that non-smokers could be attracted to these products, and that's something we don't want to see. Um, the same is true of former smokers. If, they've, if somebody has stopped smoking, they should remain abstinent from any type of product. So we don't want it to attract them back into the category. So we're looking at all those types of things. We have a huge range of different scientific, scientific disciplines working on that here in the queue. Um, and we're very excited with the results that we've obtained so far. Okay, so then given, given, the, uh, given the current research that has been conducted, um, are you yet able to determine whether or not an RRP switching to an RRP or smoking switching to an RRP um, reduces the risk of smoking related diseases? Well, all of the results so far are very, very encouraging from the chemistry that we've done through to the toxicology and the clinical studies. Everything looks really, really encouraging. And we believe these products really do have the potential not only just to reduce the individual smokers' health risk, but to reduce the harm to the population overall. So that's that's really encouraging. We still have a few things left to, to complete for our lead product, but we're, we're really on the right track. And, and we're so encouraged that we will be submitting this evidence, uh, for example, to the US FDA um, um, towards the end of this year. So that's probably going to be around about 2 million pages of science that we will submit there just to give an idea of the, the magnitude of the effort that's been ongoing in this building. Okay, um, so if we push past the science somewhat, uh, RIP, RIPs can only harm, reduce the harm of, a cigarette, of cigarette smoking in the population as a whole. If people, or smokers should we say, actually switch to these products, what work has been done in this area? Well, First of all, we've done perception and behavioural assessment in a kind of pre-market setting, so before we've gone to, to commercialise the product. And there we see, yes, smokers are able to switch. We also see that non-smokers and former smokers are not interested in the product um, either, so that's very, very encouraging. But our responsibility also continues after we've commercialised these products. And for example, in Japan, which was the first country to um, for us to sell our one of our potentially reduced products, in, um, uh, which we started in 2014, we've been following up what's happening in that country over, over time. And what we know so far is that more than 600,000 adult smokers have completely switched to our, our product and stopped smoking altogether and are using only, um, only the tobacco eating system. So that's very, very encouraging. Okay, so with regards to long-term assessment, um, are you doing any work on what the long-term benefits and risks of RRP might be further down the line? Well, we understand that long-term studies are very important, and that's something that we're, again, following up and doing in Japan, um, where we have the longest experience. So we have um, a panel of smokers who've switched to our product, and we're following them up. Um, they, they volunteer to take part in this longer-term study. And we're following up them up over the course of five years and having a look at what are the health outcomes that they, um, that they experience following having, having switched to, to the product. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Moira, for taking the time to answer my questions. I'm now going to open the, the floor up to you, the viewers at home, to you know, pose some questions to, to, to Moira. And uh, I'd like to start with I've got a few questions rolling in. I'd like to start with Irina uh, in New York, and she's asking, how do you address your critics who challenge your scientific results, Mara? Well, we totally understand that there's scepticism. We're a tobacco company, and we know that there's a lot of mistrust around uh, tobacco companies, and particularly science coming from tobacco companies. So the approach that we've taken is to be transparent with everything we're doing. So we're publishing on a really regular basis in peer-reviewed scientific journals, high-quality journals. We are opening up um, the cube here to visitors, and we have regularly have scientists coming here and having discussions one-on-one uh, -on -one with our scientists. We're also doing what we call crowdsourced peer review. So we're sharing our source data with experts and asking them to give their opinion on the data and their conclusions. Um, and we're presenting at conferences. I myself are, am regularly presenting at uh, scientific and public health conferences. And we're gaining feedback from, uh, 
from the scientific community and public health community. Um, what we're also doing is encouraging people to do, scientific experts, to do their own studies on our products. So we have an investigator-initiated studies program that's been ongoing since the middle of this year. And there, scientists can apply for funding or for products or for methodological help to conduct their own independent studies on our products. Thank you, very, thank you very much again. Um, I would like to, I think we've got time for one more question, I believe. One more question. Um, we've got so many flying in, but uh, please do keep them coming in and uh, we'll try and uh, continue to answer them perhaps with, uh, through, through other scientists um, after, after today's session. Uh, we've got a question from Aaron in Aaron all the way in Montreal. Thank you very much for your question, Aaron. Um, Moira, why is the work of PMI Science, the PMI Science team, so so important? Well, for me, I mean, this is the motivation of why I, I joined Philip Morris International was to to work on reduced risk products because I saw the opportunity to to really be part of a complete transformation of a company and potentially an industry. If we're successful in developing and assessing these reduced risk products and providing products that smokers want to switch to, the impact that we could have on public health is really phenomenal. And I think for all of us here in this building, that's the motivation to be part of this, uh, this journey. It's, it's really the most exciting thing that I've worked on in my career, and I know many of, uh, of our colleagues feel like that as well. Okay. Thank you very much you for your time today, Moya. Um, thank you very much to you, also the viewers at home. Uh, that concludes our session, our live session from the queue today. Uh, remember to use the hashtag live PMI at the, at the queue um, and follow us on Twitter at PMI Science. Um, also, feel free to check, up our, uh, check out our global Facebook and LinkedIn pages um, to continue to join the global conversation on reduced fish products. Thank you very much for joining and see you soon. Happy, happy, happy World Science Day. <laughs> Thank you.